All right, so for tying the March Brown Nymph, or at least the March Brown Nymph I like to tie, uh, that I've had success with uh, in our local streams and rivers in the West, um, I'm going to use a size 14 hook, and this is an emerger hook, it's a curved hook. I just really like the shape of this curved shanked hook. Um, some people will sometimes use a scud hook or a straight hook, uh, straight shank, whatever you'd like, but I prefer the emerger hook. And I'm going to be using a 764 uh, black bead for the bead head here. Um, let's see, for the body, uh, we'll be using pheasant tail. And uh, pheasant tail will be the body and the tail. Copper wire for the rib. Um, for the soft hackle, we'll be using uh, the shoulder, kind of a shoulder feather from a Hungarian partridge. And let's see, dubbing. I'll be using some hairs here dubbing for the thorax. So let's get started on this. Uh, one thing about the, the nymph, as I had mentioned, is that the nymph will migrate to the slower water margins on the river. And um, you know, they're definitely a crawling insect and they will crawl to those areas and they'll stage there until they're ready to emerge. And um, that's kind of where you want to focus your energy when you're searching out this, this particular insect. Um, I've heard some reports uh, in western Montana, they're starting to see these over there a little bit already. But I haven't heard too much about our local rivers here. I would think maybe by around the first week of April, if we get some warm weather, we might start to see them. So there I've got my bead on. And keep in mind, when you put a bead on the hook, the bead has a small hole and it has a larger hole. You want to make sure to thread that point through the small hole when you put it on your hook. All right, we're going to use kind of a brown colored six dot thread today and get started here. So this is one of my favorite hatches of the year. Um, it's one of the, it, it's a little, it's a larger mayfly. It's not huge by any means, um, but uh, it does, it's a little bit bigger than the blue winged olives. So if you're, if you're tired of looking at midges and uh, size 20 midges and size 18 blue winged olives, this is a, a refreshing change. A um, little chunk of copper wire. So what I did was I, put my bead on and put about a half, uh, halfway down on the thread for a thread base. I'm going to take the copper wire and tie in the copper, which will eventually become the copper wire rib. And I'm going to run the thread down. So it hangs down just past the hook point. So now we're going to use some pheasant for the tail. So this is kind of like a, a pheasant tail nymph. If you think about it with a little bit of a twist. Um, the reason I like to use the soft tackle, which I'll get to here eventually, um, before I get ahead of myself, let's talk about this pheasant tail real quick. I just pulled off, oh, maybe about six uh, pheasant tail fibers, and I want to make sure that those tips are pretty even, give or take a little bit, which looks good. I'm going to put this in my left hand, which is my non-dominant hand. I'm going to give the thread a counterclockwise spin. Now what that's going to do is it's going to allow the thread to jump back toward my fingers when I'm tying on small, delicate material. And it lays right against my fingers real nicely like that. Now here's the thing. I did that on purpose to make my tails a little bit too long just to show you that if your tails are a little bit long, you can always pull forward on that feather to make them the right length. And once you get them there, I'm going to put about three or four wraps right in the same spot. And then I'm going to move my thread forward toward the bead. All right, so there, that's all tied in. Now I'm going to wrap my pheasant tail, starting right at that spot where I ended my thread and my tail. I'm going to work this forward just like a pheasant tail nymph. One wrap in front of the other. If you want to, you can put a little bit of crazy glue on the shank of the hook here to help fortify your fly a little bit. And I'm going to run this right up to the bead because I want to wedge that bead. Whoop, I dropped my fibers a little bit there. There we go. I want to wedge that bead right up against the eye of the hook. So I ran my pheasant tail right up to the bead. And I'm going to come behind with about three or four thread wraps. Tie that off and get rid of this excess. 
All right. So now copper wire. Now one thing when you rib a pheasant tail or this March Brown, you don't want to over rib it. You're going to get about on this side's hook, maybe four, five turns at the most. So there's one, I'm going to palm this forward. There's two, there's three, there's four, and then I'm going to tie it off right there. So I got four wraps into the, uh, the, the, the pheasant tail. Now I've got two pair of scissors today. I've got my really good scissors, which are gold, and I got my old scissors, which are blue. So instead of ruining my really good expensive scissors on cutting wire, I've got an old pair of scissors I'm going to cut the wire with. All right, now we need a thorax on this insect, so I'm going to use some hair ear colored uh, dubbing. All right, some hair ear colored dubbing, and I'm going to put a thin rope of dubbing onto the thread here. And from the last video, if you guys remember, guys and gals, you just use a little bit of dubbing at a time and just make a really thin, a real thin rope of dubbing on here. You don't want your dubbing to be real thick. Now, I've got my dubbing on there. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to kind of haphazardly just kind of loosely put some dubbing on there so it's kind of scraggly, all right? Maybe a little bit of a twist. So I've got a tight uh, rope of dubbing followed by kind of some loose. And when I wrap this around, what's going to do is that's really going to get, it's going to stick out and get kind of pokey and... It's going to give a really neat, uh, I'm going to run this up toward, I maybe got a little too much dubbing on there. You could always take dubbing off. That's the beautiful thing about dubbing. There we go. And then run just a little bit more behind the eye. Perfect. All right, so there's my thorax. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going, I've already selected some feathers off of the wing of this Hungarian partridge. And so the thing is, is when you're, when you're tying a soft hackle, you can see down here where I'm taking all of the correct size feathers off for this size of hook. I've been tying a lot of these lately because I'm going on a fishing trip next week and I'm hoping to run into these. So I've tied a couple dozen of these for myself already. If you select a feather from up here for a soft hackle, for this, or for this size soft hackle hook, that size of feather is way too big. That'd be for a, a really big soft tackle hook or an application uh, for a bigger fly. I've already selected, I'm gonna pull one out of my box here. I pulled some off last night. Comparatively speaking, this is the size I'm going to use compared to this size. So it's a pretty small hackle. Now let me show you how because it has to match the size of the hook and the, imitate the fly that we're fishing. To prepare this fly, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get this in front of the camera for you. I'm going to take my hackle plier, and I'm going to pinch the hackle plier right on the vein, okay, just like that. And what I'm going to do is, is I need to isolate the very tip of this soft hackle. So I'm going to pull back against the grain. And what I've done is, is I've isolated the very tip of that hackle. Now, feathers. All feathers have a either a convex side, which is usually the brilliant colored side, or a concave side, which is on the bottom. You want that brilliant colored side to face you, or the convex side. And I'm going to tie that feather in right there behind the bead with a couple of loose wraps so I don't cut or break that feather followed by a couple more tight ones. There it is, it's tied in. And we'll cut off that little bit of excess right there. Then I'll take my hackle pliers and I'll clip it on to the soft hackle feather. Now here's where sometimes the feather will pull out or it'll break, we'll see how we do. Looks like we're gonna be all right. You're probably gonna make about one and a half full turns here. Right behind the bead, there's one. Oh, it pulled out. There it goes. That's okay. We'll tie another one in. That happens because this feather is pretty light. Let me just prepare one more for you. All right, so now we're going to tie in the soft tackle feather. All right, 
So that's tied in. And let's see if it works this time. There we go. There's one time around. There's one and a half. There, got it. Bring that thread around there a few times. It's really important to have the right size feather on there. And sometimes um, they pull out or they break like that, but they are very fragile and you have to kind of watch them. There we go, and that worked out pretty nicely. So now I'm gonna pull all these fibers back and I'm gonna run a few wraps in there just to hold it all together. And my whip finish tool, which is there, and we'll finish the fly. So I wouldn't, I'd feel pretty good about fishing this fly right now because the nymphs are moving into shallower water. And when they do move, of course, they lose their balance. They drift in the current and these are available right now to the fish in the river. So this is the March Brown soft hackle and kind of move those hackles apart a little bit. There. Yeah, once we got the right feather, it worked out pretty good. Uh, one of my favorite flies and uh, produces real well at this time of year. Uh, another thing you can do is get out on the river and actually turn over some rocks close to the river bank in those slower margins of water and just see if you find the March Brown Nymphs on the rocks. Um, so anyway, that's the March Brown Nymph. Thank you very much.